At this time, we ask everyone to please stand as we welcome in our graduates. Welcome everyone to the 58th graduation ceremony for the class of 2019 at Berea Regina High School. Before we begin, I want to remind all alum and their daughters that we will be having photo ops after the graduation up front. And now, as we begin all things at Maria Regina, we will begin our day and our celebration with a prayer our invocation will be given to us by Amanda Laurent, and that will be followed by the national anthem with the beautiful voice of Brianna Vargas. Amanda. <laughs> Why don't you hold it? Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Let us begin this beautiful commencement of the Maria Regina graduating class of 2019 as we do all good things. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, you are the Alpha and the Omega. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are our maker, our creator, our Lord, and our God, who is an awesome God. We thank you for this, for this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for everyone who is gathered here today to celebrate with us. We thank you for our graduates, the Maria Regina class of 2019, and their years spent at Maria Regina. Through laughter and joy, through suffering and hardship, through pain and loss, through perseverance and victory, you were, are, and will always be with us. And we thank you. Lord, we ask that you continue to be with the class of 2019. May you give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son. 
May the eyes of their hearts be enlightened, that they may know what is the hope that belongs to your call. May the Holy Spirit, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who has spoken through the prophets, imparts its gifts and fruits upon them, that they may flourish living in your light. May they be an instrument of your peace wherever they go. Where there is hatred, let them bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. Where there is doubt, true faith in you. Where there is despair in life, let them bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there is sadness, ever joy. May the Maria Regina High School class of 2019 change the world with the plans you have for them, never, never forgetting that they are superstars in your eyes. May they remember that they will always have a home at Maria Regina. Father, forgive us for our sins as we forgive others who have sinned against us and strive to be like Christ, the Lord, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Let us remember that we can do all these things and more through Christ who strengthens us. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. amen. Maria Regina, pray amen. for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming in the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled Welcome. It is now my privilege to introduce a student who epitomizes hard work, the class of 2019's salutatorian, Emily Siapa. families, friends, and our beloved Maria Regina community. Today is the day that has only existed in our dreams up until now. But to be honest, when I pictured graduation, I didn't imagine this kind of weather. <laughs> On behalf of everyone in the class of 2019, I would like to extend a special thank you to our parents who have worked so hard to give us the opportunity to attend Maria Regina and have supported us along the way. We have all benefited from the dedication of this wonderful school's faculty and staff led by our principal, Mrs. Decker, who always encourages us to believe in ourselves. One thing I have learned here at Maria Regina is that life is not just about the milestones and monumental accomplishments. Rather, it's what you find along the way in your daily life that matters. 
These discoveries can end up becoming more important to us than our original goals and make the journey worthwhile. As English class has taught us time and again, any good argument is backed up with three solid pieces of evidence. <laughs> Therefore, I have compiled a few concrete examples of the numerous lessons our years at Maria Regina have bestowed on us. First, we are more resilient than we think. Yes, I know this sounds cliche, but honestly, I don't know how else to describe the sight of a classroom full of girls running on a mere couple hours of sleep and way too much caffeine. These are the same girls who in first period will describe their day ahead as including tests and projects and an after school activity that will result in their getting home at 10 o'clock that night. Although these days are not always graceful, I can't think of any better indication of strength than the simple act of trudging along even when the going gets tough. Today, I'm here to tell you all, we made it. We made it through every single day and every single late night that we thought we couldn't. Though the road ahead will be challenging, finding the endurance that we have is half the battle and will serve us well as we navigate the uncertain waters of our futures. Secondly, we have established a sacred sense of community that will never leave us. Because we have been with each other almost every day for four years straight, it probably hasn't sunk in yet, or at least it hasn't for me, that we will no longer be able to animatedly discuss the latest Shane Dawson video in Homeroom or <laughs> suffer through calculus together. However, I truly believe that our shared experiences have strengthened the bonds of sisterhood we have forged, bonds that will last a lifetime. In the words of J.K. Rowling, there are some things you can't share without ending up liking each other, and knocking out a 12-foot mountain troll is one of them. Although we have not had to join together to fight mythical creatures in the bathrooms like Harry Potter and his friends did, I think we can all agree that the global documentaries of freshman year and the A-push topic assignments came pretty close. I honestly feel that I would have lost my sanity by now if, it hadn't been, if I hadn't been able to follow up all the late nights with nonsensical yet hilarious conversations with my equally delirious classmates the next day. It was on the craziest days that I found strength through all of you. Even in the toughest trig classes of junior year, I always knew that Amanda Laurent would be sitting right in front of me to hold my hand. If I was feeling down while walking through the hallway, I only had to look up to see Jane's big smile or hear Jamie's <laughs> laugh. That let me know that things aren't as bad as they seem, regardless of how backed up the sprain was that morning. <laughs> These memories will last long after we leave the school today as students for the last time and bid the curly fries and chaotic games of badminton farewell. Raylan, we almost won that time. <laughs> and say hello to a lifetime of student debt. <laughs> we are all beneficiaries of the love and guidance Maria Regina provides. And as our senior teachers promised, we always have this home to return to. This home that serves as the common thread that has and always will unite us. We have truly faced all kinds of challenges together, and that truth cannot be erased by time or distance. Thirdly, and most importantly, I have learned that when life doesn't seem to be going your way, see if you can make it go someone else's way. Something that I think we can all agree makes Maria Regina stand out is its dedication to selfless service for those less fortunate. The fact that around half of our students and several of our faculty members are willing to brave the elements, and Ms. Brendan singing, year after year to help the homeless speaks volumes about the compassion that Maria Regina fosters. This spirit of caring is not something that characterizes the school only when there's a special service event like Box City or the Thanksgiving food drive. Rather, it permeates the halls and classrooms on a daily basis. Whether it's a simple hello in a homeroom or going out of your way to make sure someone else is okay, I have seen firsthand the boundless empathy each one of you contains in your heart. After all, life isn't always about the big things we are able to give to others. It is about the small yet meaningful things we do out of love without expecting anything in return. I will carry these unexpected discoveries with me for the rest of my life. At Maria Regina, I've learned so much in the classrooms, but look at all I've discovered in between class. I've learned resilience, found a sense of community, and experienced empathy. What an invaluable education. 
I want to express how full of gratitude my heart is as I look at you all now and reflect on our time together at Maria Regina. Congratulations, my fellow classmates. We did it. Now go out into the world and be the tigers you were born to be. Thank you. Okay, so that's a pretty hard act to follow. <laughs> and I think she gave you all the wisdom you need for the rest of your lives. But what the heck, you know, I'm here. I got dressed, right? I should say something. So members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, parents, honored guests, and the graduating class of 2019. I'd like to take this moment to share with you my sincere gratitude for the time I've spent here at Maria Regina. In many ways, this class and I have much in common. We're both leaving a place we love. You've been here for four years. I'm gonna get through this, I'm not gonna cry. I told you I'm not. <laughs> You've been here for four years and I for five. And in that short time, we've made very strong bonds and have developed, I feel, a passionate commitment to the beliefs and philosophy that the sisters have laid down here at Maria Regina. We're bonded in another way. We're heading out to a zone of the unknown. Now, I don't know where I'm gonna be next year. I mean, you know where you're going to be. You're going to be in class. Sorry, but that's where you're going to be. But in September, for the first time, when the school bell rings, I'm not getting on the bus. That's 65 years of getting on that school bus. And I need some therapy right now from you, and I'm up here to vent. You thought I was gonna give you something like words of wisdom? No, I'm here to vent. Because I'm having an incredible bout of anxiety. I know you're not, you're fine. You're gonna be in freshman 101 something in September, but I don't, I don't wanna to get too dark here. I mean, it'll work out. I'll breathe, it'll work out. So let's look on the bright side. We're taking with us a lot. We're taking with us great memories. 10 years after today, you will remember nothing of what anyone said up here. Trust me. But studies do show you will remember your high school experiences. You will remember, I don't know, Romantic crushes? Anybody have any of those? <laughs> no, no, you won't remember that. You'll remember being embarrassed over something, everything, your parents, of course. Okay. You'll remember competition, healthy competition, athletic, social, academic, but what will you remember most? What will you remember most? Oh, no. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe it's what I hear you say over and over and over again, that Maria Regina is a family, a, gives you a sense of community. That one? Okay. <laughs> will you remember Friday Masses? Friday, first Friday Masses? Will you remember belting out, our God is an awesome God till your throat hurts? I'll remember you singing that. Will you remember the great lunches here, Marie? <laughs> yeah. Come on, the fries, the healthy lunches, fries and mashed potatoes, what most of you eat. Will you remember the food trucks? Yeah. That's cool, right? The food trucks are cool. Um, 
Thanksgiving food drive, and we seem to be remembering Mrs. Brennan's voice. That seems to be the biggie. The singing, the cajoling, the begging, the threatening, buy feathers or else, you know, we've got to feed the needy. Will you remember your weird Halloween costumes? Do you still have them? No? Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Will you remember pep rallies? Now, I remember my first pep rally here. 500 girls descending on the school in multicolored tutus. I almost had a heart attack. And you were coming on public transportation. Okay. Where is your tutu and who's inheriting it? Hmm. Actually, my first memory, very vivid, it's of a sound, a sound I cannot and will never get out of my head for the rest of my life. It was July, just before I became principal in September, and I was speaking to someone. <clears throat> And this teacher walked in the room. I didn't turn around. She was behind me. And I hear this voice, a voice that if you were in the middle of Yankee Stadium and everyone was screaming, you would remember and recognize this voice. No matter where you are in the world, if you ever hear this voice, you'll know whose it is. What teacher am I talking about? No. And this voice is saying, oh my God. I just got back from Italy and it was hot and look at my arm and it cast. But I did not leave that hotel without doing my hair and putting my makeup on. What a voice, what a woman, what a teacher. She's the best. <laughs> and that's the truth. And I'm sure you remember all of your teachers who guided you, taught you, passed you <laughs> these past four years. My second memory is of a student. Now remember, I'm a new principal, right? She shows up in my office having shaved her hair off. And I'm thinking, okay, there are weird girls here. <laughs> this, this is a problem. But she and her mother assure me that this is good, this is for charity. Now this young lady was very confident. She is in fact the most confident young woman I have ever met. Of course, who am I talking about? Hey. You know her, your student council president. And I'm thinking, how does a kid get this confident? Well, I guess she must have had good parents, and still does. And so my next memory, very vivid memory, is of all the passionate, wonderful, giving parents I've met here at Maria Regina. You know, nowadays the news reports talk about dysfunctional families, and kids on drugs and crazy things they're doing. And I don't know, maybe we're in a bubble here. But our kids, our families, are rock solid. Could it be God? Could it be our belief in God? Maybe it has something to do with that. But I was very lucky to come here and meet all of you. I will certainly remember the wonderful daughters they lent to us over the years. I will remember you. And I know you're gonna remember each other for your entire lifetime. After being in New York City public education for over 35 years, I got the feeling no one was happy there. No one ever smiled. And I come to Maria Regina, and every morning, whether you meant it or not, you'd say to me, good morning, Mrs. Reedy. How are you? 
I think, what's wrong with these girls? <laughs> Are they drinking too much caffeine? And then I realized, you're just nice. <laughs> and it was something... <laughs> I finally got her to laugh. You know, she never laughs. <laughs> And you made my day, every day. It was just so pleasant to be here. I'll treasure these memories. I'll treasure the memory of Brianna singing the national anthem. I'll treasure Angel's performance last night of Go Light My Candle. Forget veterinary school. Go to Broadway. What's wrong with you, girl? <laughs> and Nicoletta, wait for it, Papa Basilakis's, thank you. It took me four years to be able to say that. Artwork. Her, I said Papa Basilakis's, it's plural, possessive. <laughs> Papa Basilakis's artwork. Nicoletta's work is stunning. She's so talented. What else will I remember? I'll remember the tiger techs here on Saturday morning, sewing their little jackets together that were supposed to light up. Of course, it was only on our way downtown to show this jacket off to some engineers that we realized no one had the computer to light them up. So everyone kept yelling, that was Savitha's job. So we had to go to Savitha's house. We turned the school bus around, we went to Savitha's house, we got the computer. None of us knew what we were doing, but it lit up. Thank you, God, I will certainly remember that. And Savitha, thank you for that near-death experience. <laughs> I remember Juliana Ferrari. Where is Juliana? And I will remember her first pep rally, singing, O Come All Ye Faithful, in Latin, for Mr. Moratori. <laughs> 25 verses of it. <laughs> Thank you, I never knew it had that many verses. <laughs> Memories aside, like you, I'm gonna take great lessons with me. I don't mean, you know, the English, the social studies, the AP Cal, the AP Physics. I'm not taking those. You may, but I'm not. I mean lessons that are sort of life lessons. Now, I can hear you thinking, oh God, here we go. You know, the phrases, reach for the stars, be the dream that you want to see, take risk, make it happen believe in magic, and my all-time favorite, follow your dream. Well, unfortunately, I'm here to tell you that um, dreams don't always come true. You can follow it, but it may not happen. Little Debbie Downer here, I'm sorry. So after all these years, my life lesson, the lesson I'm gonna leave you, the lesson I learned is a little dark and not warm and fuzzy. It's actually written just about when I was born in 1888. And it says, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Now for years, I wasn't sure what that meant. I really thought, did I need to have a near death experience to be able to succeed and get strong, to achieve a goal. And then I realized that's not what it meant at all. What it meant was that setbacks, things that you don't achieve, the dream that doesn't come true, getting over it ultimately does make us stronger and ready for success. Actually, one of you said this, I think, better than the philosopher. Is it Nicole who said this? I have her hat here. And it says, the struggles make you stronger. 
The changes make you wiser. Well, that's pretty wise. When I graduated high school in 1966, I was going to be a doctor. I went to college, took all the right courses, and in four years, I applied to med school. Well, that year they weren't having a lot of women. At least they weren't having this woman. So after I ate everything in the refrigerator, got out of the fetal position from under my mother's coffee table, I said, okay, dream failed, next. And I applied to graduate school. Went to graduate school, got a job at a lab, spent my whole day with dead cells, blood, secretions, and a boss who said to me the night before my wedding at 7 p.m., I'll see you in the morning. And I said, you know, I'm not liking this. This is not for me. Maybe I'm not going to win a Nobel. Maybe I should rethink this. Back to the refrigerator, more ice cream. Uh, and now we have a third dream not actually happening, but I'm flexing my muscles. You know, I figure I can do this. And then I start thinking, I like science, and I like kids. You know, not the little ones, the snot-nosy ones, and then they'll run around, but you know, your age, these kinds of kids. And I thought, I could do this, I could teach. I could teach kids what I love, science. Even though I told my father when I was in high school I would never be a teacher, he's turning over his grave now, and, but I said, I'm gonna do this. And you know what, I was good at it and I loved it, and 40 years later, I thought this was a good career. So dreams do change. And I know failure isn't fun and disappointment stinks, but we can't be afraid to fail or we're never going to take risks. So a risk at the age of 65 after 3,000, being the principal of a 3,000 student school, I thought I'd retire and do what? And God was good enough to let me come to Maria Regina. And I met you and you made me better and you made me stronger. You've given me and each other memories. We've learned life lessons together. Both you and I are ready to move on. You to school, me, maybe to a pool, pina coladas, Grisham books, warm climate. Okay, you'll be in Syracuse, cold, where are you gonna be? Binghamton. You know what, I feel better. I feel better, I'm glad for this opportunity to chat with you. The anxiety has gone, and I think separation anxiety has subsided as well. So, bright side of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, we're all alive. And we've all found our strength right here at Maria Regina. We're ready for the next challenge. I want to thank you all parents, students, teachers, for the best years of my life. I know that yours are yet to come, although the last four have not been bad here. And I want to ask, as always, God to bless you, to keep you safe, and to bring you home often. May Maria Regina pray for you. Thank you. I'd like to introduce now your next speaker, a woman with a lot of credentials. She started off with a Bachelor of Science in Education from Fordham, a Master's in Latin from Fordham, a Master's in Administration and Supervision, a Master's in Religious Studies, 
And she's actually spent her entire professional life in Catholic education for the Archdiocese of the City of New York. This all sounds very impressive. But what I'm impressed with most of all is this woman was in the contingent of the first teachers who opened this school. And so I'd like to, in 1957, I'd like to introduce to you Ms. Teresa Simmons. Thank you very much. It's good to be home again. <laughs> Mrs. Reedy, uh, Mrs. Decker, Board of Directors, Sisters of the Resurrection, parents, friends, faculty, and the class of Maria Regina 2019. Ladies, I'd like you to close your eyes for a moment and silently answer this question. What would you like to be when you grow up? Hopefully your answer was not the same as when you were in kindergarten. Was your answer in the form of a noun, an adjective? Was it, I'd like to be a chef, a teacher, a plumber, a lawyer, an artist? The list can go on as long as your imagination can take it. Or perhaps it was, I'd like to be happy, successful, kind. Or maybe you admitted that you don't have a clue. Let's see what the next four years will bring. Let's focus on the to be of that question. No matter what you do in life, it's always informed by who you are. When you think of the teachers you have had in your education so far, you may not remember how to parse a sentence or solve a problem or decline a noun, but you do remember the teachers who were kind to you, or maybe not. Those who forgave you, or maybe not. Those who never gave up on you. Nothing is so contagious as an example. We never do great good or great evil without causing others to do the same. You know, growing old is mandatory. Growing up is optional. Before you know it, the inevitability of growing old will be reflected in your mirror. You can try to delay the progress with creams, <laughs> massages, makeup, and even a facelift. <laughs> Change, though, is another given. It's the cornerstone of life. We either frustrate ourselves by challenging it or go with the flow. Time marches on if we don't want it to. You can't plan for the future by looking into your rearview mirror. So how does this growing up work? Human beings are born learners. Learning comes in many forms. Formal schooling is only one form, not always the most influential. You're about to spend the next four or more years in an accredited school. Most of you will receive a diploma at the end. I hope it will mean that you have learned to keep learning. Every new idea stretches your mind, which can never go back to its original dimensions. Let reading, art, music, drama, infuse your life. Join a reading club, see a play, visit a museum, travel. Don't be afraid to live outside the box, to go against the flow. Take a leap of faith. Faith frequently means taking the first step when you can't see the staircase. The best thing you can do is to get very good at being you. Realize that criticism is information and information helps people change their minds. Remember change 
remember the need for ongoing conversion. Ditch the cell phone. Don't let Facebook be your source of news. Do you really want to or need to be in touch with everyone and everything 24 seven? Take a vacation from the clutter once in a while. Take a deep breath and focus on who you are. Not a few answered my question at the beginning with, I want to be happy. To be happy can mean to experience pleasure. The list is endless, a new pair of shoes, an A in my heart subject, a sunny day, air conditioning in August, the list goes on. I'm going to suggest we look at the term joy instead. In one of his earlier writings as Pope, Pope Francis wrote the exhortation, rejoice and be glad. Pope Francis reminds us that by virtue of our baptism, we are called to be holy. You've heard this here at Maria Regina many times. Therein lies our joy. I saw it last night at your baccalaureate mass, truly, Maria Regina is a Catholic school. Kudos to Mrs. Lane. You did a great job. And thank you to uh, Mary with your little talk last night. Your meditation said it all. Your witness is contagious. I lost my place. <laughs> Doing for others, no matter how small, has infinitesimal value in the sight of God. I'm tempted to say, invite God into your heart. But no, God's already there. This divine spark in us is in our DNA. It's in our genes. He wants to hear from you. Talk to him. If you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans for the day. Then ask him to accompany you through that day. God should be our steering wheel, not our spare tire, as in only when we need something. God's in charge, always. Let's talk about forgiveness. It's lost in our contemporary world if we only learned to forgive. Forgive us, as in, please forgive me with no condition. What we hear is, I'm sorry if I hurt you. Along with including forgiveness in life's roadmap, I suggest you also make gratitude part of who you are. Life is a gift. Thank God for it every day. When people cry for justice, it's almost a cry for revenge, which Jesus condemns. In the Our Father, we pray, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. The literal meaning is forgive, forgive us our sins in proportion as we forgive those who have sinned against us. There is no room for revenge. You will find, if you haven't noticed it already, you will be insulted, you will be wrongly accused, and you will presume to be wronged at times. Either way, it hurts. And the other side of that coin is that you will also insult others and accuse others and hurt others. Forgiveness, forgiveness saves us from the expense of anger, the cost of hatred and the waste of spirit. Anger eats at our very being. In fact, the best way to get even, if you must, is to forgive. Makes your enemy wonder what you're up to. The spiritual power of forgiveness enriches our lives. Stick with love. Hate is too big a burden to bear. These are words of Martin Luther King, Jr. Love multiplies joy and divides grief. God gives us the ingredients for our daily bread, but God expects us to do the baking. God's whole purpose in creating us is to share his love with us and so we share with others that love. Love is an action word. The story is told that a nephew of the great Henry James, he was asked how he ought to live his life. 
James's answer was, there are three things in human life that are important. The first is to be kind, the second is to be kind, and the third is to be kind. Words to live by. Happiness, joy is an inside job. Only you can make it happen. The only thing you can actually fix is your attitude toward persons and things. Let's change that first question to who are you going to be as you continue to grow? Focus on the present and the future. Though you can't turn the clock back, you can always wind it up again. This is why we have Lent every year, a chance to change, to grow. So you're growing older, you're growing up continuously, and above all, growing whole, as in W-H-O-L-E, as you pursue holiness, H-O-L-I-N-E-S. -E. <laughs> as we enter the last days of the Easter season, let us realize that we Catholic Christians are Easter people. Let us choose resurrection now. We, never, we, we may never work on the front lines of change, but we can change the way we see ourselves, our neighbor, and the world. And so my prayer for you, ladies, is this. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you will live deep in your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you will live and work for justice, equity, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer so you will reach out your hands to comfort them and change their pain into joy. And may God bless you with the foolishness to think that you can make a difference in the world so you will do the things which others say cannot be done. At this point, I would ask the parents to stand and extend your hands over your daughters. And I would ask graduates to turn, stand and turn and face your parents. And let us pray together for these young ladies. Lord, bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and bring you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. It is now my honor to introduce a young woman who has accomplished so much in the last four years, but we all know it's only the beginning for our valedictorian, Maggie Chiao. everyone. I truly am honored to stand with all of you today. Everyone here, our families, our friends, our faculty, Mrs. Decker, our board of trustees, have allowed us to receive the amazing education that has prepared us for the road ahead. For that, 
We all are so grateful to you. Before I begin, I want to congratulate my fellow graduates. It's an honor to have spent the last four years with all of you. I'd like to take you all back to freshman orientation. <laughs> Remember freshman you. I know we all think freshmen are bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, but I, for one, was terrified. <laughs> like many of us, I came from a small school. I didn't know very many people, and the idea of tackling high school was daunting. But I think it's safe to say that if our freshmen selves could see us now, they'd be pretty relieved and probably a bit surprised. <laughs> Girls who felt hopeless in ninth grade algebra somehow survived calculus. Girls who were strangers not that long ago are some of our best friends. But most importantly, we've all grown into strong young women who can and will succeed in whatever lies ahead. Our teachers have always reminded us that the class of 2019 is very special. <laughs> we take advantage of opportunities before us unapologetically. We create opportunities of our own. We achieve while encouraging each other and without tearing each other down. We give back. We lead. We work hard. We face every hardship with courage. And most importantly, we do all of this with spirit. Maria Regina has given us something truly unique, sisterhood. Somewhere amidst the all-nighters, emergency lunchtime study sessions, dancing at prom, singing together at mass, praying, laughing, crying, learning and growing together, we all became a family. Some of us will be in each other's wedding parties. <laughs> Some of us will be godmothers to each other's children. We're all psyched to run into each other at pep rallies and reunions. Whatever the case may be, I know that our bonds run deep and that the friendships we've made here will never be forgotten. That is something I wouldn't trade for the world. The love, support, and encouragement I have felt at Maria is something that makes this community like no other. While our time in high school was not always easy, we wouldn't be who we are today without this place and we will always belong to this community. So while we might not have gotten the exact high school experience we, experience we expected, complete with boys, our own wardrobe choices, maybe the occasional choreographed dance number, <laughs> I think it's safe to say we got something even better. And now we're off to college. Ultimately, we're all excited. I mean, being able to nap in the middle of the day and not have to wake up at 6 a.m. is reason enough for any of us but it's scary to think that this is the end of our time here. No more screaming at the top of our lungs when Katie gets up after mass. No more cafeteria chicken parm. No more commiserating after a test or celebrating after a win. But while high school is over, we get to hold on to forever the bonds we've formed, the lessons we've learned, the passions we've discovered, and the skills we've cultivated. While the idea of leaving this place and moving on can be scary, we have so much to look forward to. The screenwriter Nora Ephron once said that your education is just a dress rehearsal for a life that's yours to lead. This really has just all been a warm up. We still have a long way to go, but college is a, hard, is a challenge and a hardship I think we're all prepared to take on. More experiences and opportunities than we can ever imagine lie ahead. Some of you guys are studying things I've never even heard of. <laughs> our time at Marie Regina has showed us that our education, both inside and outside of the classroom, shapes who we are. Here, we've learned calculus and biology, but we've also learned the importance of putting aside our differences to work together. We've learned the importance of compassion, understanding, and charity. We've learned how to mend friendships, and how to be a better friend. We've learned how to make mistakes <laughs> and how to take responsibility for them and how to do better in the future. Really, we've all learned how to be women of character. We have learned to live out the virtues exemplified by our principal, our teachers, and our parents, who were our first teachers. Now, we have the responsibility of taking what we've learned and using that for good. We must tackle our studies and our careers with integrity, enthusiasm, and dedication. We must remember to use what we have 
what we have to give back in the Marie Regina spirit of service. I know that each of you is ready, no matter what your path. From the future artists to the zoologists and everything in between, life teaches us that everything of value is locked inside of us. We have nothing to lose. After these past four years, I can confidently say that all of you here have the tools you need to succeed. All you have to do is use them. As Tigers, we have definitely earned our stripes. Congratulations and good luck to the class of 2019. Teresa, I'd like to be Maggie when I grow up. <laughs> right? I feel so inadequate at these things. Well, it is time for us to present the diplomas to our graduating class of 2019. You've worked hard, you've earned it. So I ask that uh, families please hold the applause until I have read the names in the entire row so that everyone could hear their graduates' names. I would also like to remind our alums who are coming up to present diplomas, if you could come up to the right side of the stage when you hear your graduate's name and I will present you when your graduate approaches the stage. Yes, your left, thank you. See what I mean? Maggie, Maggie pointed out. Yes, my right, your left. <laughs> Mrs. Decker, it is my privilege to present the following students who have satisfactorily completed the approved four-year course of study outlined by the University of the State of New York and are thereby entitled to receive these diplomas. Margaret Rose Chiara. Emily Ann Siapa. Amanda Olean Laurent. <laughs> Margaret's diploma is being presented by her sister Annie, a graduate of the class of 2017. Emily's diploma will be presented by her sister, Deanna, a graduate of the class of 2003. Right, yeah. It's okay, the, ro the other rows will be longer. Angela Rachel Abraham, Giselle Aguilar Vasquez, Noor Ahmed, Leilani Alves, Chloe Elizabeth Barbazat, Bridget Barroso, Antonia Gia Becker, Nicole Bernadette Bien, Greta Bakiri, and Sophia Inez Bolton. Noor's diploma will be presented by her mother, Tamina, graduate of the class of 2000.
Chloe's diploma will be presented by her sister, Olivia, graduate of the class of 2016. Catherine Nicole Bonarigo, Gabriella Alicia Borges, Juliana Cacciola, Mary Camage, Amanda Paige Caputo, Caitlin Rose Caravello, Charlie Ann L. Casali, Erin Cassidy Cashin, Samantha Ava Catarcio, and Ashley Ann Cavanaugh. Gabriella's diploma will be presented by her sister, Daniela, graduate of the class of 2014. Italia Isabella Ceritani, Claudia Rose Cerulli, Eleanor Ann Clough, Samantha Conlon, Samantha Page Cruz, Michelle Nicole D'Agostino, Larice DeBain, Kimberly Jaylene DeLeon, Michelle Del Judas, Caitlin Elizabeth Dias. Claudia's diploma will be presented by her sister, Melissa, graduate from the class of 2016.
Kimberly's diploma will be presented by her sister, Destiny, graduate of the class of 2017. And this year, I'm pleased to tell you that we have a first. This is the first year that we allow sisters to present their graduates with their diplomas. And this is the first year that we have a grandmother. <laughs> Caitlin's grandmother, Patricia, is a graduate of the class of 1964. Amanda K. DeFeo, Chloe Elizabeth Donoso, Sabrina Lynn Dunkley, Sarah Enright, Catherine Joyce Escobedo, Haley Ann Fanzo, Alexis Fashi, Juliana Marie Schwai Ferrari, Bernadette Eileen Fitzsimons, Helena Sheridan Fortinash. Catherine's diploma will be presented by her mother, Virginia, graduate of the class of 1981, One. <laughs> and a member of our parent association. Haley's diploma will be presented by her sister Brianna, graduate of the class of 2016. Lauren Anna Marie Frank, Alexis Louise Galaz, Sophia Nicola Gallegra, Madeline Ariana Garcia, Emily Nicole Gaudio, Brianna Gazavoda, Savitri George, <laughs> Melissa Megan Germano, Angelis Andrea Gerald. Gina Jonai.
Sophia's, <laughs> Sophia's diploma will be presented by her sister, Juliana, graduate of the class of 2017. Yes, go! Melissa's diploma will be presented by her mother, Diane, graduate of the class of 1982. Natalie Isabella Gonzalez, Carly Goulart, Mia Jo Grawl, Sonia Hernandez, Hannah Marie Hunter, Maeve Eleanor Kenny, Alexa Juliana Krawak, Rose Elizabeth Labriola, Stephanie Efrosini Lautaris, and Anna Loria. Anna's diploma will be presented by her sister Lauren, graduate of the class of 2018. Rachel Marie Layton, Natalyn Lima, yeah. Emma Marie Mao Lent, Alexandra Lento, Dina Marie Leonard, Lauren Ashley Leone, Regina N. Lufrano, Emma J. Lynch, Isabella Mangiafrida. Samantha G. Marin.
Keelan M. Mauser. Brianna Sky Mazzarello. Deanna Eileen McCullough. Bianca Alexis McDougall. Paulina Rose Minassi. Juliana Lucia Miro. Lana Modad. Tara Mary Malloy. Jane Monahan. Angel Nicole Montanaro. Diploma will be presented by her sister Stefania, graduate of the class of 2010. Liliana Montesarchio, Olivia Mucas, Bethany Moy, Erin Aaron Teresa Mullen, Savitha Nair, Jessica Marie Nanko, Emanuela Arushu Guimaras Nascimento, Emily Nash, Kelly O'Neill, Jamie O'Toole Salcedo, Amanda Justine Orlana.
Christina Teresa Osmanski, Caitlin M. Ota, Brianna Jillian Palamara, Nicoletta Irene Papavasalakis, Natalie Marie Patafio, Ariana Rose Pichin, Loretta Papushai, Sebastiani Percellus, Naya Priester, Elena Christina Prizwarzak, Ray Lynn Olivia Purcell. Christina's diploma will be presented by her mother, Maria, treasurer of the Maria Regina Parent Association. Nicoletta's diploma will be presented by her sister, Alexia, graduate of the class of 2017. They have high ceilings in their house. <laughs> Loretta's diploma will be presented by her sister, Rosine, graduate of the class of 2018. <laughs> Sebastiani's diploma will be presented by her sister, Irene, graduate of the class of 2014. the rain. Thank you, God. <laughs> Elena's diploma will be presented by her mother, Alice, graduate of the class of 1987. Stefania Rochelle, Nicole Marie Rapacholi, Olivia Ann Richeza, Alexa Grace Victoria Ricciardi, Alyssa Reese, Danielle Amanda Riley, Madison Lee Rivera, Francesca Rocha, Claudia Brianna Rodriguez, Lairina S. Romero, and Taylor Marie Russon.
Alexa's diploma will be presented by her sister Ashley, graduate of the class of 2013. Francesca's diploma will be presented by her sister Valentina, graduate of the class of 2013. <laughs> Claudia's diploma will be presented by her sister Christine, graduate of the class of 2016. Taylor's diploma will be presented by her sister Brenna, graduate of the class of 2016. Woo! Gabrielle Marie Sabia, Angelica Marie Salamone, Alexandra Rose Salerno, Christina Salza, Roxanne Maurice F. Sampson, Gabriela Sanchez Cantino, Caitlin Grace Shook, Elizabeth Ann Shurek. Kira Ann Sherlock, Nolene Elizabeth Smith, Ty Anastasia Smith. Gabrielle's diploma will be presented by her mother, Virginia, graduate of the class of 1983. Ty's diploma will be presented by her mother, Adriana, graduate of the class of 1987 and member of our parent association.
Alexandra Spano. Grace E. Sullivan. Gabriella Marie Torres. Pamela Trevison. Brianna Esmeralda Vargas. Alessia Vicari. Jocelyn Wazlek. Alyssa Weber. Isabella Ann Zaccaroli. Christina Zagreda and Joanna Zuluaga. Alexandra's diploma will be presented by her mother, Mary, graduate of the class of 1987. will be presented by her mother, Rosa Marie, member of our parent association. Christina's diploma will be presented by her sister Alexa, graduate of the class of 2015. <laughs> Joanna's diploma will be presented by her sister Liliana, graduate of the class of 2016. graduates of the class of 2019 to please stand and I would like to invite Katie Escobedo your student symbol of our new status as high school graduates, you may now move your tassels from right to left. So, <clears throat> alumni, how do you feel?
may please be seated. This portion of the program, it's my honor to present the graduation awards to the class of 2019. The first award, the Christina Maria Barone Memorial Scholarship, is given to a graduate of Italian descent who has an inner goodness, a sense of service to others, a passion love, and love of both the Italian culture and family, a drive to learn and is hardworking, Sponsored by Mr. John Anthony Barone, the brother of Christina Barone. This award is presented to Angelica Salamone. The Ann Slonsky Memorial Scholarship, presented by Sister Cecilia Bedar, is given to a graduate in memory of Ann Slonsky, a former Sister of the Resurrection and teacher. She was best known for her dedication and commitment to her students. Her compassion and sensitivity recognized the neediest, and her efforts to offer encouragement and assistance knew no bounds. This award is presented to Elena Pazwarzia. The Dr. Andrea C. Hamilton Singh Dream to Achieve Scholarship is given to a graduate who has demonstrated academic potential and growth, solid academic achievement, and is pursuing a path of humanitarian service. This award is presented to Savitri George. The Carolyn Rivero Scholarship Award is given to a graduate for outstanding courage and a positive spirit, Antonia Becker. The Elena Chapetta Schultz Class of 72 Memorial Scholarship is given to a graduate for school spirit, outstanding character, solid academic achievement, and service to others, sponsored by Mrs. Chapetta, her mother. This award is presented to Chloe Barbazat. The Sister Mary Christine Memorial Scholarship is given to a graduate for sustained dedication and involvement in the school community over the past four years. Eleanor Clough.
The Madeline Kenyon Scholarship is given to a graduate for dedicated leadership in the school, Katie Escobedo. The Parents Association Scholarship Award in memory of Mr. John Lillis is given to a graduate for outstanding community service, service to the school, and solid academic achievement. Presented by Parent Association President, Ms. Robin Sheramonte. This award is presented to Alessia Vicari. The Parent Association Scholarship in memory of Mr. David Mahoney is given to a graduate for an outstanding spirit of determination in both academics and service to the school community. This award is given to Brianna Mazzarello. The Presidential Education Award is given to graduates for outstanding academic excellence. There's quite a list of you, so please stand and then all come up um, so that we can all congratulate you. Mary Kamaj. <laughs> Margaret Chiara. <laughs> Emily Siapa. <laughs> Claudia Cerulli. Catherine Escobedo, Sonia Hernandez, Amanda Laurent, Rachel Layton, Natalie Patafeo, Ariana Peachin, Nolene Smith, and Alexandra Spano. So girls, please come up to grab your award. The Marion John Salvo Memorial Scholarship is given to a graduate for perseverance, determination, and the potential for continued achievement. The scholarship is sponsored by Mrs. Rosemary Salvo. The scholarship is presented to Charlie Ann Casale.
the Clara Lomitire Memorial Scholarship is given in honor of our beloved math teacher. This scholarship goes to the student who best demonstrates the qualities of a strong work ethic, determination, accomplishment, and appreciation of mathematics exemplified by the namesake for this award. This award is presented to Helena Fortinash. The New York State Comptroller Achievement Award is given to a graduate for leadership potential and commitment to public service. This award is presented to Ariana Peachin. The 2019 Congresswoman Nita Lowy Community Service Award is presented to Elizabeth Shurek. The Triple C Award is given for character, courage, and commitment. This award is presented to Regina Lafrano. Citizenship Award is given to a graduate for participation in school and community service, a positive attitude, and the strength of character and courage to do what is right. This award is presented to Jamie O'Toole. There are three students to be honored with perfect attendance throughout yeah. high school, which is really unbelievable because they came in on senior skip day. And those three students are Lauren Frankie, yeah. Sonia Hernandez, Sonia Hernandez, and Caitlin Chuck. Congratulations to their parents for getting them here because I know it's very difficult. Go Congratulations. Departmental awards are highly sought after awards recognizing four years of high academic excellence achievement and enthusiasm in a particular subject area. The Departmental Award for Art is presented to Natalie Gonzalez. The Departmental Award for Business is presented to Danielle Riley.
presented by Miss Perry. The English Departmental Award is presented to Emily Siapa. <laughs> presented by Mrs. Stout. The Italian Departmental Award is presented to Isabella Zaccaroli. The Mathematics Award is presented to Savitha Nair. <laughs> presented by Ms. Donovan. The Music Departmental Award is presented to Hannah Hunter. The Science Award is presented to Amanda Laurent. Yeah. The Social Studies Departmental Award is presented to Margaret Chiara. The Spanish Departmental Award is presented to Francesca Rocha. And the Theology Award is presented to Amanda Caputo. Amanda yeah. Caputo. <laughs> yeah. The Maria Regina High School Athlete of the Year Katie Escobedo. <laughs> and the Principal's Award for Outstanding Scholar Athlete, Emily Siapa.
Okay, so I am perfectly aware that I am the last speaker and you're all ready to go to dinner, <laughs> take some photos, but you should also know that there was no way I was going to pass up a chance to speak to my beloved class of 2019 one last time. While this speech will be coming from my heart, I know I speak for many of the administration, faculty, and staff. Now having said that, what can I say and give to a class that has given so much spirit, positivity, and commitment to their school over the last four years? We knew freshman year that our class of 2019 was a special one, and you never disappointed us. I was still the guidance counselor then, and I had inherited the admissions responsibilities. I have vivid memories of eighth grade interviews for scholarships and first days for those of you who transferred in. Many of you were my first group of sophomore shadow visitors, and it was then that I got the first glimpse of how kind and patient you are. As your counselor, we spent many hours together talking about your fears, your dreams, pushing you through those early disappointments, hearing your complaints about taking Latin, <laughs> and listening to your ideas for the future. We spent one eventful evening watching Elf and flipping water bottles, <laughs> and you danced longer than any class at Benjamin's. This year, we spent some quiet moments in my office before announcements, and you gave me the best birthday party ever. Yeah. Now, in the past, we used to have freshman parent teas, and we would do presentations. So during my presentation, I would always use the same joke, that I would tell my husband that I was so tired at the end of the day because I had to deal with about 100 or so daughters. I had vowed back then that I would always try and treat my students, make decisions about you as if you were my own. Well now, some years later, I still try and do my best to hold true to that vow, yet things are somewhat different. We are obviously not at the freshman tea anymore, and I am no longer the guidance counselor. And yet, while it may have been a joke back then, Today, I do feel like I am saying farewell to 138 of my beautiful, smart, and wonderful daughters. For many years, I have described Maria Regina to others as a family. Some may think this is some marketing ploy or cliche, but we know better. Families come in different forms and they don't always agree. However, all families share an unbreakable bond. We are bound by our shared experiences of sadness, joy, disappointments, and triumphs. We are a Maria Regina family. Look around at your Maria Regina sisters. You are forever connected to the young woman sitting next to you. She is your sister, even if she wasn't at your lunch table, or on your team, or even in your class. Maybe grab a hold of her hand, but at least hold on to this moment. Remember the feeling of what true connection is. It is through your relationships with one, the person sitting next to you, and the others that you will be defined by. Our Maria Regina family is extraordinary because no matter what, we know that through our faith in God, and perhaps even more specifically, our love for our blessed mother, Mary the Queen, we are never alone. Through your education at Maria Regina, you have built on your own faith foundation. You know, and perhaps because we said it so much this year, that you gain strength and can do all things through Christ. As an earthly family, we are not perfect, 
but we never waver in our love and support of each other. So what can I give this beloved class of 2019? I give you my hope that you will seek, find, and keep true friends during your journey. And most importantly, that you will treat them as we have taught you, with love, forgiveness, and respect. I give you my prayers that you will find the same sense of gratification in your life's work as you have given me in our time together. I was given the most precious gift of being your principal, the chance to support, guide, challenge, and celebrate with you. Through our relationship over the last four years, I have felt true joy and fulfillment. I wish and pray you find the same. Don't settle for less. Lastly, I give you my promise that we, your Maria Regina family, will always be here to reassure you that you are strong, you can do anything, and you are uniquely exceptional just the way you are. Our most treasured moments come from situations that are sometimes difficult. Don't be afraid of these challenges. You know that with your faith, you will have hope when you are weary, perseverance when you stumble, and the ability to recognize true joy when you triumph. Be confident, we have your back. In closing, I was gonna be brief, did I tell you that? <laughs> I wanna quote one of my favorite strong women, Miranda Lambert. <laughs> now the girls know that I'm a music fan, so they know, who else would I quote? <laughs> she has a song called Mama, I'm All Right. In it, she sings about leaving home and the people that love her more than everything and want the world for her. She reassures her mother that she has angels all around her. The lyrics sum everything up. Mama, I'm okay out here. I've seen how, world, how hard the world can be. My step is sure and I know my name. I'm strong just like you prayed I'd be. I am strong just like you prayed I'd be. Class of 2019, you are ready to go. It's time for you to show the world how special you all are. Thank you for all you have given, for all you have taught us. Thank you for your kindness, your hard work, and for making your families, all of them, so proud. We love you. Thank you.